Hello traders, my name is Ray, better known as Samurai Trader, and I love day trading. My job is to teach you how to day trade the world's best day trading strategies, no matter which market you trade, futures, forex, or stocks. In today's session, I'm going to be teaching you how to scalp and day trade the ES. And of course, what I cover in this session, you can apply to any market. Now, we'll be specifically uh, focused on tick charts today. However, you can apply the exact same principles to time-based charts, range, or ring code. And we'll just see how we go. I think I'm probably going to have to do a couple of sessions, at least two, with what we're about to cover. So, let's get underway. I do need to pull up the disclaimer. There is a risk in trading. And uh, don't start trading a live account until you master these strategies using the simulator. Now, what is really important today? I promise you I'm going to cover some great ideas and strategies for you. These strategies work. But as the great late Frank Zappa said, a mine is like a parachute. It doesn't work if it isn't open. And that's perhaps one of the greatest challenges that I have as a trading coach and as a trader in training traders, having them open-minded of a possibility. So please make sure you've got a pen and notebook ready because we're going to cover a lot of strategies and ideas that work. And the only reason these strategies will fail is if you fail as a trader. And you know what? I speak very openly and very straightforward to traders. Some traders don't like it because they're sensitive. But mastery takes time and having the right mindset is so critical to your success as a trader. So let's move on. Now, I've got a couple of goodies for you. Uh, first of all, uh, you can download my compound contract uh, con track your yeah, spreadsheet calculate. By the way, I should mention all of my videos are all real and unedited. All right, so I'm not running to a script here, okay? So anyway, you can download my spreadsheet calculator, which I'm about to show you uh, absolutely free. So you're about to uh, click on the link below. And of course, make sure you click on the link below to be kept up to date with my latest videos. Better still, go and visit my website and a very, very quick advertisement, $197 for my entire program, including all of my indicators. Uh, you can attend eight of my live coaching sessions or watch the recordings. Anyway, I don't want to turn this into a big advertisement. So make sure you do download my calculator because you're going to want it when I show you this. Now, this is where um, uh, a lot of traders their eyes glaze over and they really don't want to hear about it and they wonder why they keep blowing their account. You've got to learn to trade and think like a casino. This is a rules-based business. We've got to follow our money management rules. So what I'm about to show you uh, on the ES, we'll talk about having a maximum of, of an eight tick stop. Ideally, I want to get away with a six tick stop, which is $75 per contract. Eight ticks for the assumptions we're going to use is $100 plus add in your commission. Some brokers, of course, are under $4. Others are over 5 We want to allow that. So if you're trading during the New York hours based upon the current margin requirements, you will need a $6,000 account. Now, that includes a buffer. Traders, the great thing now is if you don't have 6,000, you can start by trading the micro ES. So if you've got as little as $1,400 or even less, you can trade the micros. Now, if you're going to be trading, say, during the Globex session, which is when I'm recording this, and we're going to be having a look at some live charts and look at some live potential trades today, uh, you need would need a $13,000 trading account. Now, Every broker is going to have a different margin requirement. So right now with TradeStation, who I'm with, uh, you would need around 12,000 for the overnight market. Now during the uh, New York session, you'd only need 25% of that. Now don't break these rules, traders, because you will lose money. You know, as I say, there are old traders, there are bold traders, but there are no old bold traders. Why a buffer? When you first start trading with real money, you're probably going to make or, or 
implement a couple of losing trades. You're going to make mistakes. That's part of learning. It's just part of the education. So always have a buffer. Now, why is this important? Traders, if you don't have a trade in gold, you're like a ship without a rudder, whether it be as low as, say, $100 a day. And I'm going to show you today how to do this. Okay, so let's just say here you've got a $6,000. I'm going to call it the New York account session, okay? Because unless you've got a larger margin, when at the time at least I'm recording this, uh, you're going to have to have more in your account. So if you're targeting $100 a day, and every time you build your account to $6,000, you start trading a second contract. You get another $6,000, you start trading three and so forth. It would take you, if your target was, say, $10,000 a week income, it would take you 44 weeks to get there. If you're targeting, say, uh, $5,000 a week, it would be 35 weeks. Now, how do we get there? You only need two five-tick trades a day. And after commissions, that's net. Okay, you, and uh, for any members, and no doubt there will be, I've got over 9,000 members, no doubt there will be some members watch this on YouTube, uh, that's only um, two scalps basically on your two Bs. We call them the 80% plus trades. As Dick Diamond says in his excellent book, Trading as a Business, for him, if it's not an 80% trade, that is, if, if he doesn't believe it's going to be an 80% trade, he doesn't take it. So you just need two good setups a day. Now let's ramp this up a little bit. If you say after $200 a day, uh, you're up to your $10,000 a week income in only 18 weeks. That's only three six tick trades a day. I'll show you how you would have had those in the first hour, first hour or two today. Uh, and they're very mechanical and that's very, very important. So you need three trades a day and look at your capital base. If you continually compounded that, Okay, you'd have over a million dollars there or $2.4 million in one year. Now that's, and now let me be straight with you here, that's on a 2% risk and that's on eight ticks, which is a little higher than what I'd like to have. Uh, but as you build your account, you'll lower your risk factor down to 0.1, oh, sorry, down to 0.5, my apologies. Now, just last one before we get into this, uh, a good trader should be going for at least an average to good Profitable trade will be going for at least 300 a day. That's five, six tick trades a day. You're up to your 10,000 potentially in 11 weeks. Uh, you can see there just huge income potential. Now that's five, basically five scalps a day by six ticks. So uh, for any members watching this, this is a two Bs. You'd be after, yes, you'll see we'll pick them up on the 34 Bs, but the two Bs, either the 34 Bs or the two Bs, as you know, are going to give these to you. No trend, no trade. But I'm also going to show you some counter trend trades because when it comes to trading, there are, of course, different trading conditions. Now, very important, if you are a new trader, you've got to treat this as an 90 to 180 day internship. One of the greatest challenges I have is that dealing with traders that have blown their account three or four times, have gone live uh, too quickly, uh, the psychological damage, it, it's really a challenge to help them get over that. So I love what the late, great Earl Nightingale said, never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. And as I say, where you are in one year depends on what you do today. Let me teach you how to get there. Now, how are we going to achieve our weekly targets? You may notice I said weekly. Now, we may go for a daily target, of course. However, you are going to have, you know, down days. That is the reality. But if you're trading like a casino, thinking in probabilities of 20 trades, you know you're going to come out miles in front. Now, there are four basic trading strategies. Now, you need to focus like a laser beam when you first start trading. Focus on only one or two strategies, trend following, and build from there. It's so important that you, once you master those, you own those, you, then you can add other strategies. Because there's retracements, there's reversals, there's breakouts, there's range bounds, uh, which I can't stand. That's quite often when we're in chop, a very tight, tight market. And I'll show you how we avoid those or how at least we have a heads up that they're um, just around the corner. So what we want to do initially is to be trading with the trend in the direction of a 
higher time frame. Now traders, you'll notice I use three time frames. Uh, I have what we call our entry chart, which is really our little red lines here, waiting for a retracement, a pullback. Then I've got my anchor chart one, and I have an anchor chart two, an even higher time frame. However, when you first start trading, you can start with just the two, just having your entry chart and your anchor chart one. Now, as we're about to go to the charts, there's something very, very important, and it comes down to the chart time frames that you're going to be using. For an example, during the New York hours, we've got a much, generally speaking, higher volume than, say, the, um, uh, the Australian session or the Asian session. Then, of course, volume starts to pick up as we lead into London, which then rolls over into New York. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of examples of trading with, uh, say, during the uh, Globex session, which is um, right now. Now, right now, uh, as I'm recording this, it is uh, 10, it is, uh, what is that? It's uh, 8.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's 8.47, it's 10.47 a.m. my time. So as you're about to see, there's some great trading opportunities after hours. And if you're a new trader, it's also a great time to really um, to, to pick up your skill set, to master the art perhaps before you leave your job. But we have different time frames subject to the different markets. Okay, and as I mentioned, you can download um, uh, my free uh, calculator for what you just saw. And by the way, there's a little instructional uh, uh, video I've got on how to actually do that and how to use it when you download. You'll get a link to that as well. And don't forget my free training manual. Let's now get to the charts and let's get into this. So first of all, what you've got in front of you is a 50 tick, 150 and a 450 tick. Now we are, this is during the Globex session. Now, I'm using what I call round numbers. You might choose to use Fibonacci numbers, for example. Uh, you'd use a, if you're using Fib numbers, you'd use a 55 tick, a 144, and a 377 here, instead of 50, 150, or 450. However, these round numbers work an absolute treat. Now, during New York, you would be using, if you're following uh, my strategies, potentially a 500, a 1500, and four and a half thousand. If you're using um, uh, Fib numbers, you'd be using a 610 tick as your entry. A 1597 would be your anchor chart one, and a 4181 is your anchor chart two. But I teach you all of this anyway. But it's very, very important because your chart needs to be what we call tradable. Now, some of the key reasons why we want to refer to a higher time frame, we want to be looking for retracements or pullbacks on our entry chart and trading back in the direction of our anchor chart. Now, why don't we just, and the time frames I'm showing you here, the exact same setups work on all time frames. So we'll start off because right now we've got the, um, uh, what am I saying here? <laughs> Uh, we've got the 50 tick, and it's because the Globex session is open, let's just um, uh, start with this, because we might see something set up live, and I can show you this. Uh, now, if you're wondering about volume, if I just show you this right here now, this is the ES, uh, and I've just got a one tick Renko, which I love during the Globex session. All right, now, we won't uh, even talk about the, the Renko right now, but if you look at your market depth here, if you're a 10 contract uh, player, so a five to 10 tons of volume, okay, even during the after hours market. So effectively, you can be trading this market 23 hours a day. Now, there are some other markets that are there that you get a greater trading range and it's easy to hit your, day, your daily profit, such as oil. It's been a bit challenging the last year, but it's really picking up. And the NASDAQ, you know, the NASDAQ can be a real wild beast but it's a lot easier to hit um, larger profit targets. But let's stay focused, stay focused, Ray, <laughs> on today's market. Now, I'm just going to get to the open of the Globex session. Now, the open here is Sunday night, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, sorry, 
come on, let me just get across here. Three, let me just, I'm just skipping past uh, Friday's action. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, just about there. Skip too far. Ah, sorry about this. We will get there, but this is important. Okay, so we can see the open of the globe accession Sunday night, USA time. Now, we'll see tons of volume because you've got a lot of traders around the world will trade the ES basically 23 hours a day. Okay, so what we've got here, traders, on the left is what we call our entry chart. And what we're looking for is for, is for key bounces off our EMAs. Now, the further away, the further out from your major EMAs you get, the more likely you are to have a failure or a, or a deeper pullback. So we've got to keep an eye on that. Now, when the market first opens, whether it be um, uh, oh, the globe accession anytime, usually it, it takes about five minutes or so. That's one minute. I'm just looking now. Now it becomes tradable right here. Okay. Now we've got a number of entry techniques we can be trading. Let me just sit down here. Um, and I should just say here, traders, uh, at my desk here, I have um, a very large custom standing desk. It makes it a lot easier when you're trading. Uh, I've got six screens set up here. And so it just makes it a lot easier when you've got a standing desk. And I have lots of traders ask me about this all the time. And I've got uh, a good old um, draftsman's chair to sit down here. So I can either stand or sit, whatever really suits me. And, and just while I've got this on, uh, the camera on, many of you already know this. And you can see one of my pattern boards over here is what I do is I have my trading rules. Rather than in the flip folder and have stuff all over my desk, I have special brackets made up on my custom desk here, which allows me to review my trading rules as I trade. And so regularly, I'll just look over and glance over to review my rules. Look, that works well for me. We're all going to have uh, different styles and different um, trading. So back to this. <laughs> This right here, uh, for any members watching this, you know what you've got there. That's a T20-1 right there. All right, so we've had a change in market direction, and we've got a trade entry right here. Now, when you're trading tick candles or, uh, say, time-based candles or volume, ideally, you want to see a close in the upper one-third. You want to see that there's momentum behind it. Now, you may notice down here, I've got a tick countdown timer here. I offer my entry and my anchor chart one. I don't worry about it so much on the anchor chart two. Okay, but what is important is on my anchor chart one just here I've got it. Because if ever I have, say, a counter trend move or a very large move, what I might do is rather than enter on, say, a close on the entry chart, I'll enter on the close on my anchor chart. It's just gone off screen at the moment. Let me just pull that back a little bit. It's a bit skew if. Um, and so what I'm looking for then is for the candle to close, uh, which is three times higher than my entry chart. Now, when you enter a trade, there are three key factors that we consider. Number one, where's my entry? Where's my stop go? And where is my target? Now, here in this case, ideally, I want to tuck a stop under my EMAs by one tick. Now, I want to have, though, a maximum size there of eight tick stop. That's the maximum. That's $100. Now, say if you're using a market order and the market takes off, okay, and it means my eight ticks is here, that's when you've got to decide, is there enough momentum to keep your stop there or to not even take the trade? Okay, so if it's taking off, uh, the maximum I want to have is eight ticks. But on the DOM, I'll have a six tick stop, okay, because quite often you can get in. And if we just look at this trade entry here, or potential high of 28, so uh, we had there a low of 27. So you can see there a six tick stop well and truly worked out there. Now, what you'll see, see these white paint bars? You'll just see these. These are called my super scalper. Now, they don't form until I get an uptick above the second. But we're not going to worry about those too much in this particular session. Now, 
There's a number of things we can do. We can enter a trade here based upon pure price action. That is ignoring the stochastic. Now, I love these slingshot trades. That is where you get a hook on your stochastic. And it can be a nice bit of insurance. Now, this is a two smooth. You can use a standard stochastic. The main hook you want to see is on your percent K, right? You want to see a percent K hook. So I'm in on the close of this candle and I'm watching my countdown timer to give me that because I really want to make sure I get in on the close. OK, and my stop then would, would have been two ticks below. So entry, stop, where's my target? This is where traders, we need to consider and we need to really change our philosophies a little bit here um, is I believe we need to go for what the market will give us. Meaning that we can see up here I've got a floor pivot or a midline pivot just above me, which is the 50% levels between the pivot. Very, very strong bounce points. So we've got to be very, very cautious with those points, traders. And we nearly always will get a bounce, as you can see just there. So right there, I've got an entry there at 28. And we can see there, there's easily an eight tick move, but you easily picked up six ticks. Okay, so the difference from your entry, easily eight ticks there, but let's just say six ticks. Now that's $75 less, less your commission on a one-to-one. -one. Now, of course, you might be deciding, well, look, I want to go for larger time frames. Well, we're going to really be talking more about day trading and scalping here, going for those smaller targets because the profits soon add up with those. Okay, so there's our first trade. Now, when I do come up to a high like this, my next consideration trade is, is do I have divergence? And let me just show you this here. Uh, let me just go over here on all time frames. And this is very, very important for me. What I've got just there is, um, uh, for members watching, that's a, a classic T19 trade. Okay, so you've got a classic T19 right there. And what a T19 is, traders, is just divergence on your lowest time frame. Now, when you've got divergence on your lowest time frame, it's also of a higher risk trade, all right? And what I recommend for new traders, you don't take these. You only trade, uh, and, and, it, and any trade, if it's struggling or until you're consistently profitable, I really rec recommend these. You, you really trade what we call, and that's a 2B just there, one, one, We've got a couple of different names because that's got a number of setups there. It's also called a 2B. Your 2Bs are your highest probability. A good trader will achieve about an 85% win-loss ratio okay, on 2Bs, and you'll get some really nice moves. So I'll perhaps stay focused on those, but I do want to point out some of these divergences as we go along. Here's a classic divergence. Now, when we've got divergence only on the lowest time frame, we want to target the 34 EMA because you'll nearly always get a bounce. If you've got divergence on a higher time frame, one of your anchor charts, we target the 89 down here at the cyan. Okay, we have a deeper pullback. I want you to think about the logic behind this. Which type of divergence has the most strength, do you think? When you're trading a lower time frame where you get a lot more noise, or when you're trading a higher time frame, it's your higher time frames because of the noise that you can get from your lower time frames at times. So I would take this, but here in this case, and my entry would be right here on the close below the eight with my stop above this little swing of high. Now that's only a four tick stop. And just be careful about making your stops too tight. I'd recommend a minimum in trading this, a minimum of a five tick stop. Okay, now here, I'm probably only going to pick up four to six ticks and I'd be out here, but that's a really nice little scalp just there. Okay, so that's a nice little scalp. Pays your commissions. So a four to, tick, four to six tick scalp there, that's between um, four ticks is $50.00. Five ticks is $62.50 per contract you're trading. All right, so what I'm now waiting for, and what I want you to notice is right now, we now have what we call a fanning of the EMAs. Now, what exactly is that? 
See how my EMAs here are all fanning apart over here on my anchor chart one and on the anchor chart two. We won't move these for now. Let's just leave them there. We want to just look at what's happening here on the right hand side. So that's great. So what I'm looking for is a deeper pullback. I don't have one yet. And I want to have a pullback down to the 89, down to the 200 and have what we call a 2B. Now I've actually got one, an entry right there now. On the close of that candle, now this is going to be a good one to see the size of this stop. Um, what I might do, can I just, um, I don't, what can actually happen is sometimes when I move this, it'll, it'll move and I'll see what's happening on the high time frame. So what you don't, we don't want to have a look at it at the moment. So at the moment, the high of that is 28.50. The low of that is uh, 27. So one tick below, that would be an 8 tick stop if you ran with an 8 tick, which is $100. Let's talk targets. Our entry is on the close of the third. Got a countdown. We're ready to get in. Our stop is one tick below, is 8 ticks. Above, I've got a midline pivot. And the good thing is, this is the open of today's session. This is our Globex high. So that's a really good target to go for. We've, we've got to get, first of all, we've got to get through this pivot. Okay, now my break even and take profits will be at four to five ticks, by the way. I'm, I'm a bit of a chicken. That is, um, if I see resistance here, I'll take what I can get. I can always take a re-entry. Right, because this could always turn. And I'd prefer to, you know, once again, you can make a lot of money picking up one tick, um, sorry, um, one point, four to five tick trade. So let's enter here. So let's, um, so we're in at 28.50, okay? So let's, now we're up there at, uh, what's that, 28.50. Let's just look at that high. Uh, there, well, that's 29. 75. So what we've got there is six, is uh, five ticks. Ah, and see that white candle? That's a red can. That's a red um, candle coming down. Okay. Now, if you're trading multiple contracts, this is where money management comes in. What you may choose to do is take half off at the pivot, and pivots are very predictive. Okay, they're a leading indicator, and maybe uh, go to break even or consider. Uh, halving your stop. There's a lot of, and look, it's beyond the scope of today's um, session on what to do here. But I would have actually gone flat on 10 lots at that stage. I would have gone flat on the lot. Okay, and now look for another re-entry. Now, I've got another potential re-entry. What I do want to wait for is notice my trigger line, the, the 8 EMA. See, now I've got to close above that. I'm ready to go long again with an eight tick stop again and that's about eight ticks there all right so let's now go long notice here that my emas i'm heading in an uptrend um, uh, in a moment we'll look at what's happening on the anchor charts in a moment but i can tell you they would also be in an uptrend so uh, up we go so here ideally we're after our six to eight ticks all right now stops there uh, comes down Okay, so it came down four ticks. Remember my stop eight ticks here. Come down, let, let me be exact here, okay? So we got in on or around the close, which is 29. Uh, the low there is uh, 28, so only one point. Okay, so I tested my stop by one point. We're up, we're in the money, one tick. Okay, one tick and bang. Okay, now I get my eight tick move, which is $100 per contract. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Notice, traders, how now I've made a new higher high at this stage. And I will finish after this one and I'll do a second video. Uh, but let me just now move this along because this is where trading gets interesting. So let's just go along here. We've made a new higher high. And what I've got now is what we call a 2D. Uh, might only be a 1D, actually. Let me just move this along. And what I've got here is what we call a 1D. Now, this is when we have divergence on our highest or one of our higher time frames. See that there? I know we can look at that, but that's 
too big a picture for this type of MACD that I use. And even if you don't have TradeStation, I'll give you the settings where you can set this up on a standard MACD. MACD. This is what we call a zero lag. But uh, if you've got Ninja Trader 7 or 8, by the way, I've got a special MACD for you. Any other um, uh, charting packages, I've got a MACD setting which will model this exactly. Now, why is this important? These are very, very high probability reversal points. Notice the high there, this high. Now, where I want to take my entry is on the close of this candle here, below the 8. Where's my target? My target is, remember earlier I said if I get one of these, we're targeting a 1 or a 2D. We target the cyan down here, right? So uh, that's a good 6 to 8 ticks. Now, what I do want to show you is this. See how we've been going sideways here. Now, we've now hit it, and uh, we're probably about to hit support here. Is that um, uh, when you start to move sideways, what looks like, what might be a good six to eight tick move uh, might turn into only four or five ticks if you go sideways for ages because I do want to get out here. One important point before I finish this video, and it's this. What I want you to remember, traders, is about pivots. If you're in an uptrend, a pivot initially becomes resistance, and after resistance, it then becomes support. I want you to remember that. Okay, so uh, what we're looking for, and we now have, and actually we had one right there. You've got a re-entry to go long just there. Let's just see what happens, and bang. Now, this is the rule. When you're in an uptrend, once you break a pivot and price comes down to test that pivot, you want to trade the bounce in the direction of the overall trend. So what I'm going to do is finish this video here and I'll come back to this because we are 32 minutes in and we'll continue to discuss how to trade um, our tick charts. And just to you, had a couple of different trade entries there, by the way. Had one there uh, and your next entry point would have been right there, trading with the trend. And I just should point out, <laughs> once again, I've got to put a bit of an advertisement in. Once again, $197, uh, you get all of my program. It's, it's been described as a gold mine. And um, uh, also, I throw in, you can attend eight of my live coaching sessions. And if you can't attend those, um, uh, you can watch the recordings. And if you wish to continue, I've got over 200 traders in my uh, weekly coaching sessions. It's only 97 a month to stay a member. So come and join the 200 plus traders. Some of them have been in my sessions uh, and many are full-time traders for over three years now. So it's only 97 a month if you wish to continue. End of ad, let me get G'd up for the next video.